لا هي مسجلة بري ريكوردد كمان يعني هاي تسجيل ثاني تسجيل لايف بس في تسجيل لك موجود ماشي تمام دكتور يعطيك العافية ما عندكم تسجيلين طيب خليني أنا أجيب المحاضرة بينت السلايدز اه بينت دكتور بينت ماشي يا الله يلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احنا اللي ضايل لنا ان شاء الله بكون ختامها مسك هو الموضوع النيورو فيزيولوجي بكون ختمنا الفيزيولوجي 1 فيزيولوجي 2 This subject is very important for all health professionals not for dental for dental pharmacy nursing كلياتهم بندرسوا احنا طبعا بندرسوا ب different details for our objectives of this lecture at least the first lecture is uh, uh, to state the parts of the central nervous system you know from your and uh, to you have taken neuroanatomy mishayek. from neuroanatomy lecture you know that the nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord Fahona, a central nervous system and the brain with spinal cord we were going to discuss these but we're going to discuss them in a different way than just spinal cord and brain. And we will depend on what we have taken in year one. في أخذنا شغلات. Okay. Uh, we'll describe the level of organization of the central nervous system. Uh, level of organization are three. There is the lowest level of organization, which is at the spinal cord. Then we go up uh, to brain stem and subconscious uh, areas like cerebellum, basal ganglia, and so on. And the highest uh, level of organization, which is the cerebral cortex. Uh, we will talk about the function of the central nervous system in general, but you will go to deduce these functions. The first lecture, we will compare the endocrine system and a nervous system because you remember these two systems are control systems. We will uh, con uh, compare them uh, from uh, the aspects of control system. You have already taken the endocrine, so we will talk about it. Describe the anatomy and the functional unit, which is the neuron. This is just a review because I know you have already taken the neuron in too many subjects. Determine the areas of communication of CNS, which is the uh, 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 synapse. So the, as a comparison between the nervous system and endocrine system, the nervous system is very fast. Why it is very fast? Because it uses action potentials. And you remember action potentials in some neuron, if you remember it from year one, in some neurons like A alpha neuron, A alpha neuron their speed of transmission might reach 120 meters per second so it is very fast very fast uh, transmission of the impulse here Sorry. In the endocrine, the endocrine uses hormones, and you remember maybe from your endocrine, the hormones are released from glands called endocrine glands, and the release is to the blood. So they go from the blood, they have to go from the blood, and if you remember also, if these hormones are uh, lipid soluble, they have, to be, have, they have to have a carrier. From the blood, they circulate until they reach their target cell. And in the target cell, what they do, they uh, they uh, bind to their receptors. One we see hormone receptor interaction. Bad my see hormone receptor interaction, we use a confi second messenger. We use a con at uh, 
So from there, you will go uh, a, a long pathway. That's why the uh, uh, endocrine system is very slow. It's very slow. So this is one area of comparison. Now, the other things is the difference in terms of gain. What is a gain? A gain is a measure of the effectiveness of the uh, control system. The gain equals the correction over error. Let's just, uh, just give an example. Like the mean arterial pressure, you have already taken the, that in uh, the first semester with Dr. Uh, Iba. She told you said that the mean arterial pressure is around 100 millimeter mercury. She type. For some reason, it might go up, whatever it's that cause. It might go up, مثلا, 120 millimeter mercury. Then when it rises to 120 millimeter mercury, right away the baroreceptors work. And the baroreceptors work trying to decrease this back to normal. They will ne never decrease it back to normal. They might decrease it back to 105. So the gain for this baroreceptors is what? How much the correction? The correction is 15 because it was 120 decreased to 105. How much the error? The error still there is 5 millimeter mercury error between 105 and 100. So 5. Now, how much the gain? The gain is 3. 3 is a very low gain. Very low gain. Let's see if the uh, uh, endocrine system works, the hormones they work. The hormones they will raise, they will uh, bring the uh, blood pressure back to 100. Bond zero, 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 one. Say here. So now for the endocrine, the correction is how much? Is around 20. And the error is around zero. Which means that the gain in this case is almost infinity. Infinite gain. So the gain for the endocrine system is very huge, very high. And the gain for the nervous system is low. So this is another difference. Third difference between these two is the nervous system usually affects the skeletal muscle causing contraction, relaxation of skeletal muscle and the glands causing release of hormones. This is the nervous system. The endocrine system, on the other hand, affects the growth, the metabolism, and the reproduction. So their effect, the effect of the endocrine is different than the effect of the uh, nervous system. So these are the differences between the two systems. If you have any questions, please, any questions, just let me know. Don't just stay silent. Nada ma'aki? Ma'i? Ah, doctor. Time. This is the organization of the nervous system. Nervous system, central nervous system, Hakana consists of spinal cord and the brain. When we come to the central nervous system, we have two parts. We have the afferent part, which is sensory. And the efferent part, which is the motor part. Now in the sensory, we have sensory stimulation and visceral stimuli, sensory somatic, I mean, somatic from our body. 
and we have visceral from down from internal organs. From heart, from GI, from lung. The motor, you have the somatic motor, which is the voluntary, say, nervous system that affects the skeletal muscle and also glands. We have the autonomic nervous system. You have already taken the autonomic nervous system with Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Iba. She talked about the sympathetic and parasympathetic, so I'm not going to talk about, we're not going to talk about the autonomic, we're going to talk about the motor and the efferent, efferent and different, the sensory parts. Okay, so uh, the organization of the central nervous system, we have the sensory division, like tactile, visual, auditory, olfactory. We will study some part of it. The integrative division, that's the difference here between here, the receptors for the uh, sensations, sensory receptors here. If you remember when we talk about uh, last year, we talk about receptor potential, how the receptor respond to stimuli. So from the receptors, they go through maybe uh, through um, tracks to the brain. Unless these sensations reach the brain, the person will not feel it. So this is the area of control. This is called synapse. You have already, we have already studied this in the year one, two. So here we have the an efferent part, efferent, efferent neuron or sensory neuron here. And then it goes through here. These areas are in the central nervous called integrative area. Integrative where can be stopped or can be increased. Integrative area. So this is the sensory, this is the integrative. And then we will have the motor from the brain. It comes back to the muscles here. To the spinal cord and from the spinal cord they go to the as the lower to the skeletal muscle here or glands so this is this is the lower motor neuron so this is a motor division and this is the sensor division and in between is the integrative division okay response to and move in our sensation mm, type this is the uh, general uh, organization we have the receptors here that sense any stimuli and then uh, run through the afferent neuron action potential here. And you remember also this receptor, this sensory system, how it codes for the intensity, how it codes for the location, and how it codes for the type of stimuli. Then you have the cell body at the dorsal root ganglia. They enter the spinal cord. They might be used for this is interneuron that connects the sensory with the motor, or we call it sometimes association neuron, or this sensation can go up to the brain through tracts. What do we mean by tracts? A tract
axons when N C N S نسميهم أكسون نسميهم تراكس في two kinds of tracks ascending tracks يعني إيش يعني sensory tracks في descending tracks Descending يعني motor tracks. هلا tracks بسميهم axons in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system we call it nerves. The nerve in the peripheral nervous system is axons in the peripheral nervous system. Axons. In peripheral nervous system. Then they connect to the efferent neuron here. And the efferent goes to a effector organ, which is either muscle or gland. This is the general uh, uh, organization of the central nervous system. So we have the functional classes. We have <coughs> afferent neuron that they will inform the CNS about what's happening in the uh, in the external or internal environment. Efferent neuron, this is a motor, carry instruction from the NCNS to the effector organ glands or muscles. Interneurons, which are found entirely in the CNS, that connects the motor to the sensory responsible for integration of afferent and formulating efferent. And there is higher mental functions like with the mind, like memory, like uh, learning. These are the number of interneurons, the number of interneurons in the central nervous system outnumbers the number of either afferent or efferent. So their number is a huge. This is the sensory division. And you know the sensory division starts with the receptors here. These are the receptors. We're not going to study the receptor because we have already taken that in year one. Receptors for pain, like free nerve endings. Receptor for pressure, like pacinian corpuscles, expanded head. Receptor for touch, free nerve endings, and piston corpuscles for the muscle. In the muscle, there is the muscle spindle that is important for what we call it proprioceptors. What is a proprioception? Proprioception is the sense of position. So this is the sense of position. <clears throat> From there, they are carried through afferent neuron here, enter the central nervous system, and they go through tracts here. These are ascending tracts. And the ascending tracts are the uh, sensory tracts. And then they will reach the cerebral cortex. Unless they reach the cerebral cortex here, they will not be felt. They will be not felt. Like, 
يو ريمبر وين يو وير نيو كلوثز عندما تلبس لباس جديد بتحس بلباس جديد بصير حكك after a while you don't feel it why you don't feel it because what happens called adaptation they adapt كمان اخذنا بسنه اولى then this is the motor system the motor axis the motor axis starts from the brain here the motor areas of the brain they descend these are called descending tracts And these are, of course, motor tracts. We will study their function. And from there, from the spinal cord, they go to the skeletal muscle through the lower motor neuron. And the neuron that brings these stimuli from up down is called upper motor upper motor neuron sometimes they simulate they say they try to simulate the brain uh, by a computer and they said that the computer works to some extent, they try to invent computers that work to some extent like the brain. The brain, you have problem, which is input, like sensation here. Sensation. It will go to the central nervous system, and the central nervous system is like CPU. What CPU? CPU is Central Processing Unit. Central Processing Unit. And there is some computational procedure, then the end weld output, which is motor here. So this is the central nervous system. It works like that. Okay. These are the levels of organization of, of uh, uh, organization of the central nervous system. The first level, which is the lowest level, is the spinal cord here. Most of the some some uh, 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 neural function they work only through the spinal cord, especially reflexes. Reflexes, the reflex circuit, that's from the receptor here. They enter the spinal cord, and in the spinal cord, either through interneuron or directly, they go to the skeletal muscle to contract it without reaching upstairs. This is called the reflex. So this is this happens through the spinal cord. We will study it. Now, in the in the in the spinal cord, there are circuits, neural circuits, neural circuit for walking. The same circuit that is used for walking is the same circuit that used for reflex. The same circuit may be used for withdrawal and support. Subhanahu wa taala, ما بدو يحط كل كل function إلها circuit إلها neural circuit ما بتوسع. The circuit نفسها إذا استعملت for reflex might be walking, might be for withdrawal and so on. This is the first level of control, which is the spinal cord. The second level of control is the brain stem here, lower brain area, the brain stem, medulla, bones, and mesencephalon, mesencephalon, the midbrain, hypothalamus, thalamus, basal ganglia, and these usually they control subconscious body's activity. So here there are, there is no Arabic translation for subconscious. In Arabic, we have either conscious or unconscious. Not here. Subconscious, it means that these functions, <clears throat> they work below the level of consciousness, but above the level of unconsciousness, like control of arterial pressure, respiration, equilibrium, 
feeding reflexes, emotional pattern. These are the second level of organization. And the highest level of organization is the brain and cerebral cortex. Cortex never function alone, of course, always in association with lower centers, Lamaigia. Uh, in the cortex, there is a large memory storage, large memory storage. That's especially the younger you are, the more the storage is because the younger, when the are, you are younger, the brain is plastic, what we call plasticity of the brain. It means that you can put in the brain as much as you want in terms of information. In the kids, you can teach them too many languages at the same time because their brain is, uh, is, is plastic and they can accommodate too much. Essential for thoughts, learning, memory, each portion of the nervous system, of course, we will talk about it. Each portion of the nervous system, specific function in the cortex that might you have might have taken it in the neuroanatomy, but we will read it uh, or talk it about it. The anatomy of the neuron. Uh, this is the neuron here. This is the neuron. Neuron is uh, consists of soma, which is the cell body here or soma this is just to revise it very fast because i know you have taken it too many times and you can just talk about the neuron as your hand your arm the palm of your hand the palm is the cell body here and the fingers are the dendrites the fingers are the dendrites here the dendrites are very important because they collect information from large areas. The cell body here, or uh, soma, con contains almost all the organelles of uh, any cell, except maybe the centrosome or centrioles, because these cells, this is the uh, worst thing about neurons. If the neurons, di if the neuron die, they don't regenerate, they don't divide. Neurons, if they are damaged, they don't regenerate. But because they are very delicate and they, they don't regenerate, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the central nervous system, and the brain, the brain when brain in the skull. Then the brain is found in the skull. And the skull here is the hardest tissue in our body, which is bone. There is no harder tissue in our body more than the bone. And then the spinal cord, the spinal cord also, which is the part of the spinal cord here. is surrounded by the vertebral column and the vertebral column you know is the hardest also tissue which is bone so that's why subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this areas from damage so here the cell body that has a nucleus uh, that has uh, missile granules Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, and everything. The first part of the uh, neuron is called axon heloc, axon heloc. And this is the unmyelinated part. If this neuron is myelinated, so this has a myelin sheath, and the myelin in the peripheral nervous system is formed from Schwann cells. The myelin, in fact, is a membrane that is rounding around the axon too many times here. This is the myelin. And you remember, since the myelin is the cell membrane, the cell membrane is phospholipid, phospholipid by layer, because this is just the membrane of the cell is rounding around the axon. 
and uh, fat looks like white. That's why axons in the central nervous system are they are going to form white matter. So the axon is uh, the myelinated axon. It looks look white. Now these Schwann cells they don't uh, surround the whole axons. They leave they leave some parts here which are unmyelinated area, and these areas are called those of Ranvier. Ranvier is a is, is a French scientist, so whoever likes to pronounce it, runs of Ranvier. So at the end of this axon, we have the axonal terminal that contains certain chemicals inside it here. These chemicals that are released upon action potential, and these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. And we have already taken the neurotransmitter in first in year one, neurotransmitters. So this is the general structure of the uh, structural and functional unit of the uh, central nerve, which is the neuron. This is the neuron. Look to the anterior motor neuron, how many uh, synapses they have. And you remember, you remember the synapses here are called axosomatic synapse between axon and soma, axosomatic synapse. And these area of synapses are very important area for control, axosomatic. And this here, axodendritic, between the axon and then right. And these synapses here on the axon sometimes is called axo-axonic synapse. Between the axon and axon. These are very important area of <coughs> control. This is the same thing. This is axo-axonic. This is axo-somatic. Axo-axonic, and this is axodendritic synapse. And this is the first part of the axon. This is called the axon hillock, or the first part of the, and it has very least, very low threshold. Do you remember from first year why it is, has very low threshold? Because it has very high level of voltage gated sodium channels. Okay. Communication between neurons through release of chemicals. We talked about these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. We talked about them last year, and we talked that there are two kinds of neurotransmitter, either rapidly acting small molecule neurotransmitter or neuropeptide. General characteristic of neural communication, if it is uh, electrical, if it is chemical synapse, this is one-way conduction between a neuron called pre-synaptic to post-synaptic This allows the pre, the one way this allows the signal to be directed toward the specific goals because if it is both ways, you cannot really control it. Now we are going to talk about uh, uh, the, the, the sensory 
the sensory uh, system, the somatic sensation, the first part, which is somatic sensation. Uh, we will talk about the mechanoreceptive sensation and its receptors. You remember we talked about it, some uh, classification in year one. We will describe here the two pathways for transmission of somatic sensation. One is called the dorsal column system, dorsal column medial lemniscal system, and the other is called anterior lateral spinal thalamic system. So these two, these are the two main systems for somatic sensation. Anterior lateral pathway or dorsal column medial lemniscal system. We will follow their pathways and differentiate the two systems. You remember the mechanoreceptive sensation stimulated by mechanical displacement like tactile, touch, pressure, vibration. These are all tactile sensations. Position is called proprioceptive sensation and the position could be static and could be dynamic. Dynamic, that's what we'll talk about the rate of change, rate of change. Besides the mechanoreptive, we have thermoreceptive sensation, talking about heat and cold, temperature. No nociceptive sensation, which is pain. Pain is called nociceptive sensation. These are mechanical uh, sensation, mechanical somatic sensations. Detect pain and activated by a factor, by any factor that causes damage of tissue. You remember pain when we talked in the year one, that pain, we said pain is almost non-adapting because pain is due to damaged tissue. But it is really very harmful if these receptors, they adapt. Yani is a damage of tissue, solo adaptation, you are never feeling to, you are going, you're going to uh, not feel the pain if there is adaptation, but then it damage, it will continue, continue. Lama a, bil akhir, shu bilisir, fil hai, fil ijer, aw fil tooth, bilisir gangrene. And what is the treatment of gangrene? Sar gangrene bil rejil, shu bilis awula, amputation. So that's, that's uh, uh, why pain is non-adapting, non-adapting. We have the <coughs> tactile receptors connected to, if you remember, A delta and C. A delta is the smallest myelinated fiber and C is unmyelinated. They detect touch pressure and found almost everywhere in the skin. Mesner corpuscles, Mesner corpuscles, uh, they are attached to a beta fiber, rapidly adapting. Shufon, any corpuscular, any one with capsule, any encapsulated receptor is usually uh, fast adapting. The Messner corpuscle, it is encapsulated, it has capsule. That's why it's rapidly adapting. It is found in glabrous skin. Glabrous, which means non-hairy skin, non-hairy skin. Merkel's disc, they are found in hairy and non-hairy, both hairy and non-hairy skin. And they are respond rapidly first and then slowly adapt. Hair and organs around the hairs, so they detect movement of the hair. Raffini and organs, it is found in the dermis. <coughs> so it is sensitive to, it is found in the dermis, that's why it is sensitive to pressure. And it is slowly adapting, respond to continual 
Bassinian corpuscles, Bassinian corpuscles, it is, it, it's found down in the dermis, it's sensitive to pressure, and it is very rapidly adapting. Very rapidly adapting, Manato, it might be sensitive to some sensation that goes on off, which is vibration. So Bassinian corpuscle is sensitive to vibration with high, with high uh, frequency, more than 8,000. 800, I mean, 800 hertz. What does hertz hertz? Cycle bear. Cycle bear second. They detect vibration and other rubbing. Which one also detect vibration, but lower frequency? Mesner corpuscles they detect vibration, but they detect vibration with lower frequency, less than 800. These are the sensor receptor. This is the free nerve ending. Expanded tips. We have already taken them also in year one. Tactile hair around the hair shaft. This is Bassinian corpuscle. Sometimes they call it like onion ring. Onion ring. But then Messner corpuscles at all, how can they respond to vibration? Messner low frequency and Pacinian uh, 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 is high frequency, and that's why they are rapidly adapting receptors. Krauss's capsule, uh, it is down in the dermis. Raffini and organs in the dermis. Golgi and muscle spenders, they are on the muscle. So these are uh, proprioceptors. Sometimes uh, Merkel's disc, they form a dome under the epidermis. From uh, for matter and epidermis, we have ridges, throughout the skin. This is due to the ego dome, IGU. Uh, ego is the uh, name of the person who describe it only. It's not ego. It's ego, ego, Hegel, he is self. La, it's I have ego dome. This is uh, Merkel's disc with extended tabs. So Messner corpuscles, hair receptors, Bassinian corpuscle, Raffini, they are attached to a beta fiber, a beta fiber with a speed from 30 to 70 meters per second. Free nerve endings transmit through A, delta, and C. As you see, A delta is the smallest myelinated and C is myelinated. They are slow uh, speed uh, uh, fibers. The A delta between 5 to 30 meters per second and C fiber between 0.5 to 2. You remember that when we uh, classified the efferent fibers, we classify them into A. And C. C is unmyelinated. A is myelinated. A alpha, A beta, A gamma, and A delta here. Okay. Now, if the information is critical, they have to pass very fast.
Now, let's talk about the pathways. Pathways, Hakana pathways for transmission. There are two pathways for transmission. One pathway is called dorsal column medial lemniscal pathway. Dorsal column medial lemniscal because the dorsal in the they pass in the dorsal column of the spinal cord and in the uh, CNS in the uh, spinal cord and the brain they form the medial lemniscus. The, and the other system is called anterior anterior lateral spinothalamic pathway. Okay. You remember the spinal cord when we have the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord here. Segments. And this spinal cord segments has gray matter and white matter. They form what we call it hordes. And this is the central canal. If say this is the right. And this is the left. This uh, spinal cord segment is divided into uh, columns. This is called the posterior, if this is a posterior aspect. And this is the anterior. This is the posterior column or dorsal column. And this is the lateral column. And this here is the anterior column. Dorsal or posterior column here. Here anterior or ventral column. Now the first tract The first tract runs in the posterior column here. This is the posterior column or dorsal. So here the tract. The track comes from the receptor here.
it enters the spinal cord and then it ascends to the brain through the dorsal column, dorsal column here, or posterior column, that's called dorsal column, and here the cell body is found in the dorsal root ganglion. That's why this is called dorsal column, medial lemniscal tract. Now it does not run through, this is neuron one here. This runs until the brain stem. In the brain stem, it synapses with its nuclei. There are two fasciculi here. One is called fasciculus gracilis. That takes the information from the lower part of the body, lower half of our body. And there's another fasciculus beside it. Here. And this is called fasciculus cuneatus. They bring the information from the upper half. Of our body. Let's talk about them in details here. <clears throat> then the dorsal column, this is their pathway. From the uh, receptors. Here, better pathway from the receptors. They enter the spinal cord. They go through either fasciculus gracilis or fasciculus cuneatus. They go to their respective nuclei in the medulla oblongata. They synapse, fasciculus gracilis synapse with gracilis nucleus. And fasciculus cuneatus synapse with the cuneatus nucleus. And then from there, they cross to the other side. They cross to the other side and they ascend as the medial lemniscus here. And from there, they go to the thalamus. They go to the ventrobasal complex of the thalamus. Ventrobasal complex. or ventrobasal nuclei, which are VBL, ventroposteriolateral, VPL, ventrobus, and VBM, ventroposterior medial nuclei of the thalamus. And from there, they go to the primary somatosensory area of the cortex. And the primary somatosensory area is found in the post-central gyrus, okay? Post-central gyrus. So this is the two tracks. Now, what they carry, this is the last thing. What they carry, they carry a sensation of fine touch. What do you mean fine touch? Fine touch means well localized. 
إذن find touch will localize touch يعني إذا نخذك الدبوس هون بحدد موقعه بالذات exactly also they also they carry fine pressure vibration stereognosis شو stereognosis يعني أنت مغمض مشي ايدك على الطاولة بتعرف انها انها هي سموث ولا طرف وهي ايج وهي زاوية وهي. This is called stereognosis to know things by touching to know the form, الشكل and texture, الملمس to know the form and texture of the things by touching them. Stereognosis of the lower limb and lower trunks بعد يمشي. اذا this is the receptor نفس الشيء الريسبتور هاي كونياتس هون. Cuneatus nefsic touch pressure vibration proprioception 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 nefsic shea hon proprioception proprioception position okay hai hek nefsic shea hon it then contains large myelinated nerve fibers large Myelinated nerve fibers for fast transmission between 30 to 110 millimeter per second. High degree of spatial orientation. هون من نراجع هون المرة الماضية القادمة إن شاء الله. في أي سؤال لحد هون؟ في أي سؤال؟ كم واحد ضل معي مش عارف مش عارف أكون روحتوا كلكم يا جماعة. داعش. آه ندى في أي سؤال؟ لا يعطيك العافية دكتور. لين حمزة وسيم في أي سؤال؟ يعطيك العافية دكتور. لا يعطيك العافية دكتور. طيب إن شاء الله يوم الثلاثاء بنكمل، يوم الثلاثاء كمان خلينا على التنتين بنشوف إذا ما إذا بس بتبطلوا تيجوا بخليكم بس الخميس، شو بدي أسوي أنا إذا بس بتبطلوا تيجوا؟ بنشوف الثلاثاء والخميس إن شاء الله. يلا مع السلامة. مع السلامة دكتور يعطيك العافية. نوقف التسجيل. التسجيل بتشوفوه على المايكروسوفت ستريم.